science. We get experimental science. We're curious, non judgmental. What they were able to do was to get this whole mouse imaged for many different things nerves, muscle, and then what you see in white is DNA. And so imagine if your question is how are two things connected within the body, these kinds of imaging techniques will actually help you answer that question. But paper number two is called Whole Body Cellular Mapping in Mouse Using Standard IgG Antibodies. There's a lot to dissect here. IgG antibodies are the standard antibodies one uses when doing immunohistochemistry. When doing those fluorescent images that we've taken and that I've, we've shown in different papers, that is like the basic antibody that you use. And we'll go over how you make them and why they're called IgG. But in their defense, there's no other way to say this. Like to have that information and like what the kick that they're going for to clear the tissue. So the question is, these researchers want to take an entire mouse and image it. And normally you're limited by what you're able to do. So why do you, why would you even want to do this? Number one, let's say that I want to see all the neurons in this organism and how they connect to the gut or where there are certain proteins within the neurons. And I don't want to take slides of the animal. I just want to put the this organism under a microscope and see it all. And let's say maybe it's not the whole body of the animal. We'll go a little bit less crazy. I just want to take the whole brain. Normally, no confocal or standard microscope can you do that with. It is luminology. So there is luminology, one way to do it currently before this paper came out. And the catch is that it is hilariously expensive. It has to be euthanized, Mike's. Has to be euthanized. So this is the issue, luminology. This is a mouse brain, and do you see how it's not see-through? So if you try to image this, if you're trying to shine light through this and to fire up certain neurons to glow, you cannot image deep into this brain. You would have to take cuts and sections of this brain in order to get any depth into your field of view. However, there is this very expensive compound called Clarity, and you put the brain or whatever tissue into the substance and right before your eyes, do you see how it's clearing? For example, the big problem that folks had with uh, tissue imaging was when you start with the tissue, it looks like this. It is not see-through. And so when you put it under a microscope and try to shine a laser through it, the light doesn't go through the sample to the sensor. The light stops near the tip top of the sample and bounces off because it's not see-through and so you need to make the sample be transparent for the light to get through so that you can illuminate structures that you're interested in so one method one reason why these researchers did this particular study was they wanted to do a cheaper method they wanted to have a cheap way of clearing the tissue to be able to use more standard microscopes so that more people can do this technology and do circuit mapping or protein mapping or muscle mapping or whatever you really want. And so why I think it's cool is yes, it's a methods paper, it's a new kind of technology, but it's a really cool piece of technology. And so it did that particular compound. Now that compound is very expensive. It also still requires specialized microscope to use. And it also eats away at some components of the tissue that you put in. But what it does is it removes the fats from the cells. And the idea is that these researchers were trying to remove the fats and the cholesterol from these tissues in a much cheaper way. So this is a six week old mouse brain. There is the 3D image. And then the first step is to render the whole mouse brain transparent using this organic solvent based tissue clearing. What that means is it's something that's easy to acquire, you're able to make it and that it's not going to dissolve away the tissue it makes the brain transparent. So you can now see the internal anatomy of the brain. And so this is that same brain imaged again. Step two, so they actually have a really cool software that identifies cells of interest. So the idea is you're not just doing the imaging right the imaging is step one after imaging you want to be able to get a particular region of that brain out and figure out what's in that region of the brain so if you the researcher want to identify okay here are these neurons and they have some proteins that i'm interested in i want to see what else is in that region you need to extract that entire section of the brain and when you do you can perform that proteomics or the sequencing on that region of the brain and then figure out what's going on in there and it's cool is they built a little robotic arm that you can use when analyzing your tissue 
So he put on VR glasses and is exploring this mouse brain in virtual reality. So he's marking a neuron. Look, you see this red path that he's marking and he's just tracking a lot. Like, and honestly, like this is probably the best way of doing it. He's going along that, he's walking along that neuron and, you know, clicking. This is still it. This is still it because there's still a lot of, you can't do it all AI yet, right? So there's human curation going in and you're exploring within Actually, the brain. Quite right. we can just and again, what's cool, I think, is that the tech is open source. So you're able to do that, you download their tech. So again, question is how do you get these kinds of images and how do you make them, you know, look really pretty and beautiful images? So let's say that you start off with having a series of neurons. There's the dendrite, there's the axon. And you want to be able to make this neuron glow green. Pretend right now it's not glowing. The neuron on the outside of it has little molecules all over it that basically say this is a neuron. And it's just expressed all throughout that neuron. And so you, what you want is to make something that binds that yellow dot and glows. What you want to make is an antibody that binds this. So the way you do that first is you have to isolate that yellow compound. So you take a test tube, you put in your neuron and you break it all up. You break it all, all up. You break everything up and you end up after a couple of uh, dilutions, you can isolate a vial worth of these yellow dots. That is the molecule that's on the outside of the neuron. You then sequence what this molecule is, or you get a protein sequence, right? Because it's most likely an external protein. And that you can translate back to a molecular sequence and you can make E. coli or bacteria make a ton of this. So you end up making a dish. On the dish, there's a lot of little cells and you put in the genetic information of that yellow dot in the form of a plasmid. So a plasmid is a circular section of DNA. And what you can do is you can add in this yellow gene and that'll essentially, when you put that into a cell, those cells start producing whatever on the plasma that you put in. And so in the broth or in the medium, you're going to have all this yellow stuff secreted. Those are, again, these here on the neuron that you're trying to identify. You can then take the sera, the liquid of this, and what you end up doing is you put it into a bunny rabbit, okay? Why? This where Rush, you're on point. And so what ends up happening is the, the bunny's immune system kicks in. The bunny identifies its immune response that this molecule that's inside the bunny doesn't belong. And so what you end up happening is an antibody will be formed against the molecule and it, it kills the molecule. So the bunny makes antibodies, just like how if you have a foreign bacteria in your body or a virus, antibodies are made and that is remembered inside of your body right something in in me is no longer like the rest that is this new thing that is inside of you that is the molecule injected and you get these antibodies now what you then do is that you do a blood draw and you have a new vial now and ideally in your new vial you'll purify it a few times but you have these antibodies in the vial tons and tons of antibodies the big thing is that you want the antibodies to be precise and only against the molecule that you injected. There are many kinds of antibodies. Some are a bit more promiscuous, meaning that they'll bind to a bunch of other molecules as well. And then there's more, more and more targeted. So what you can do is you can inject the bunny a second time. And then the antibodies that you get out are even more precise against that molecule that you want. So eventually you get a giant vial of, in theory, antibody. And then you dilute that vial into a bunch of tiny, tiny vials and many, like thousands more. And then in theory, you have enough for a decade to do experiments with. So then we go back, we go back to our original experiment, which is how on earth do you make that neuron light up? You take the antibodies that you isolated from the bunny and you incubate it with that neuron. And so what ends up happening is the antibody binds to those yellow dots and they bind all across the entire length of the, uh, the neuron. Every plot where there is an antibody, there is this yellow dot, the antibody will bind. Every single one of those spots, they bind up. No, 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 so you want it to glow. Right now you want things to glow. At this stage, nothing is glowing yet. So once you've bound your antibody, you have one more step to do you have to get a secondary antibody the way you get a secondary antibody is the exact same way you just inject into a different animal so what we're gonna do we're gonna take our antibodies and inject them into usually you inject the Cusco poisons Cusco you take the antibodies in this vial that you collected from the bunny rabbit and you inject it into the llama the llama's body will recognize those as foreign 
the same way the bunny's body recognized the that yellow molecule is foreign. And so the llama makes antibodies against the rabbit antibody, right? And so those are now bound. And what you end up doing is you take these antibodies and you add them to your original axon mix. So to your axon, that red, you bind the secondary antibody. And what's really cool is on the tips of those secondary antibodies, you add in a glowing fluorophore. I'm, I'm marking it with green and now they'll all end up glowing. And so that's the glow method. Um, so that is the technology that they're using for this kind of study. So they are having the primary antibody that they generate, like we just went through, that binds to a molecule of interest on the axon. They then have the secondary antibody bind to the primary antibody and that has a glowing component on it. You can then put this under the microscope and it will glow. And again, this is, we did it pretty rudimentary, but the yellow dot that we made the molecule against is all on the entirety of the neuron. So you make the entire neuron glow, but these can be very specific. You can go and mark individual neurons in a brain. You can also mark uh, other variety of structures within the, whatever structure you're marking within. So there's gonna be genes that are expressed in a group of neurons for example or a single neuron and so they have these different marks that you can identify and again it's not just on neurons it can work for a bunch of different part organelles tissues other organisms you name it this is just the fundamental concept and the big big push is with how you do this technique is again let's say if if this was in drosophila so fruit fly, then you make the primary antibody in rabbit, you have to make the secondary animal or antibody in something else. So you make it in llama. The reason is when you put in this antibody from the rabbit into your model, your organism of in question, it has to be from a different organism. You cannot make something like a rat, you cannot test rabbit antibody within another rabbit because it'll it'll react within itself you have it has to be the only rabbit thing in your sample it has to be your antibody so that's a different organism and then your secondary has to be the exact same process where you cannot have it on the same organism you have to have it from a different organism otherwise it'll self-react that is again the big catch is that your primary antibody and your secondary antibody have to be made in two different organisms different from the organism that you're testing in next step is actually getting the images so what they said was they did a light sheet microscope imaging technique so technology that the the authors had that would able to remove the fats and the cholesterol from the tissue to make it transparent so that technique is meant to remove the fat so they can the tissue can be see-through right but then you have to put the tissue into a, mi a microscope called a light sheet microscope and so what that device kind of looks like is you basically have this a vat and the vat inside of that you have two lasers and a camera we've done the antibody stain on that brain right we've cleared the tissue we've cleared the tissue of the brain and now you have to get the images like that mouse that we just saw a hook that goes into this liquid and on the edge of the hook you have your brain sample and then when you turn on the microscope to do the imaging the microscope itself will take optical sections you know that you define for how thick the section should be and it actually image, images from two sides yep whole brain uh, so this is a light sheet microscope and so you'll shine lasers from both directions here and here so you can illuminate both sides and get the images. And so you can tell the software, you know, of how, what sections to go through. And if it's too big for that field of view, you can stitch images together as well. When you stitch them together, you can build a new fancy image with it. And so that's the technique that they're using. So they have an antibody stain that we just went over. They have a special clearing solution that they've made that's no longer proprietary, but open source so you can use do it at home yourself and then they have the imaging now again what's really cool is with this imaging if we zoom in on this image and again let's say for the sake of argument this is our brain uh, tissue and then we have a particular neuron neuronal section in in this image that you're interested in and that you were really interested in a particular protein that's where your antibody was located to so let's say that's where this is where you're seeing the glow signal what you can do is with a robot, which is also open source, as Dan Karen pointed out, you can actually go in with a really fine tooth needle and remove this cell type and do proteomics and sequencing on it. So again, it's a way to map the brain of an organism or whatever tissue that you're interested in, where certain proteins are localized, 
within that tissue using immunohistochemistry that fluorescence and then the specialized imaging technique allows you to extract and identify like identify where they are and then extract them using a very fine ro robotics probe to be able to pull out the sample. So it's really revolutionary to be able to do something like that. So luminology, that's the paper in a nutshell. This is the process that they utilize in order to get that imaging technique to be able to do something like this, uh, which I think is, it's quite a revolutionary study to be able to get these kinds of images. And yeah, look here, like here again are the kind of images that you can take. Look at these, these are absolutely stunning of where you can see in, like organs, organelles, and the different colors are different things that you've marked. So luminology, the colors here are different antibodies against some different things. They can be different things within the image. And it's uh, used as different secondary antibodies with those different colors to make it look like that. So yeah, I think it's, it's quite beautiful that you can do something like this. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of variety here lots of different things to be done an update for the human brains that i don't know uh these are still like being done on like these experiments you're seeing done on are like euthanized mouse so there's a long way to go before you can do any kind of invasive things in any ethical manner to a human brain but these hopefully will lead to avenues of research that allow us to cure individuals yeah